We started to develop this way of working some 35 years ago in the early 80s when we became a team, group of people, of doctors, psychologists, some nurses working in a very small psychiatric hospital up in the northern Finland. And we had an idea that we want to have a family-centered system in which family would be involved. First trying to apply family therapy, uh, also with individual psychotherapy, and realized that this is not the way to go on. And then we actually heard of a, a work that has been done in other part of Finland by Professor Yrjö Alanen, who has developed what is named a need-adapted approach. And in their work, they had uh, developed an innovation of the open meeting, with an idea that you need to have an open meeting with all involved, the patient who is admitted to the hospital and the family to find out what are the unique needs of every client. And we became very enthusiastic that idea and that's what we started to apply 1984 and that was the origin of, uh, of, of the work and of course many things happened at that time it was, it was not at all a ready-made idea or ready-made approach, but step by step in research, in education, in reorganizing the system, we came into a, a, a description in this way that we now call as open dialogues. I don't think that thing like mental illness exists. So that I don't think that uh, schizophrenia is pathological state but uh, we are dealing with some other issues when we meet with clients with uh, very severe mental health problems, as for instance psychotic problems. And that's for me the main point of view, starting to look at what are the things that we need to deal when we have a heavy experiences in our life. And in that way, I look more of these uh, psychological ideas of the, for instance, use of the symptoms in surviving in a very different situation of life. But this is not to say that, uh, for instance, it's not important to know what happens in our brain, because all those issues, of course, are part of our embodied being on the whole, that we try to find out the integration, intertwining of the different parts of human life in, in dealing with the severe crisis. And the second big point for me is always look the relational point of view instead of only looking at the client to take into account what is the relational context she is living. I want to be able to help the people to hear more of the voices of their own life. Perhaps those kind of voices that they do not hear in their daily life I mean the voices of every f other family members themselves, but also those experiences that may have been difficult for them. And in this dialogical meeting, I suppose it becomes more possibility to, in a safe way, to be familiar what are my experiences to me and also to other ones. And this is uh, perhaps the simple way to say. I many times said that the aim in the meetings is to construct new language for the experiences that do not yet have language. And that's perhaps the aim on the whole in this way of working. The idea of open dialogue on the whole is to integrate the best possible methods of care for the best of the, of the clients and medication can be one part of it. So this is not at all any non-medication ideology. But it's very important to be very selective as a part of the process to decide what kind of uh, medi medication is used. And for instance, in the research that we have done, we have realized that by organizing the care in this way with active family involved, a lot of psychotherapeutic attitude, you can radically decrease the role of the medication in the, in the treatment. And uh, when you do that, the results absolutely becomes much better. And actually, we have a very fresh 19-year follow-up to show that the differences really can be amazingly different compared to the open dialogue and a treatment as usual setting, where the medication is very much used.